So I'm out here in my shop. Oh wait, it's not a shop. It's a gym. Where's all my equipment? Where's all my tools? Well, I've got some disappointing news. I started bladesmithing in 2021 uh, after watching Forged and Fire like everybody else does. And uh, it was horrible. And then I started getting a little better and a little better. And through the help of a couple individuals, one mainly my friend Sam, I started to get pretty good at it. Uh, I was making some nice, really beautiful quality pieces. Um, I'd done some stock removal. I had done um, more forging than stock removal, but uh, either way, I was coming out with some nice blades. He really taught me a lot on fit and finish and different things uh, as far as heat treat and uh, normalizing and different things like that. And I was really learning and it was like uh, blade smithing was kind of becoming a part of me. like. This was something I could really sink my teeth into. I was getting, um, I had upgraded twice to different belt sanders. I really had one that uh, um, was gonna be it for me. Um, you know, nice, um, uh, what do you call it? Like, it could go forward, it could go backwards, reverse the direction, it was variable speed. Um, I even had a nice 27 inch heat treat oven coming in the mail. And, um, out of nowhere, on Christmas morning, actually, I noticed a little spot on my arm. And then a few days later, it became a few spots. And then after that, my complete arms and hands in between the fingers, all over the arms, everything, my toes, my feet, everything was covered in these red spots, uh, red patches. And I learned that there's such a thing as wood sensitivity. So after prolonged exposure to wood dust, especially some of these exotic wood dusts, um, but not necessarily exotic woods, uh, I had no idea anything about this, but you can become sensitized to wood, wood dust. So I got on a chart, like a website, and they give you a chart and they tell you, which was there's like hundreds of woods in there and they tell you which ones are sensitizers which ones are not which ones can cause reaction whether it be skin eye irritant uh reactions with your heart uh i do have a heart valve condition that i was born with that i didn't know about until recently um uh also respiratory uh they give you the level like one to four or four stars one star of uh how um bad these different woods can affect you. And what I didn't realize was is simple woods like walnut, um, which I love working with walnut, um, maple, just just uh, simple plain woods, not your exotic woods like your um, cocobola and your ebony and your, like, you know, your Honduras rosewood and things like that, um, Patagonian rosewood, just your simple ones like walnut are sensitizers. So what happens is being exposed to this wood dust, it sensitizes your body. Just think of like the reverse of a um, immune system where you gradually become immune to something. This is the opposite where you gradually become sensitized to it. So anyway, long story short, um, you don't lose this. And uh, the more that I dealt with wood and wood dust, and you can't make a knife without wood dust, um, I'll get into that in a second. Um, I just realized that, okay, this time it was completely my arms. I mean, I looked ridiculous. It took over a month to go away and I looked pretty bad. I was embarrassed to go out in public and stuff like that. Um, I always wore, you know, PPE. I wore my, my goggles. I wore my respirator. Um, but this is a skin issue. Now, if you mess with the wrong wood, it can become from a skin issue to a respiratory issue. So I started speaking with some people that were woodworkers or knife makers, and some were rushed to the hospital, some were EpiPen on the way to the hospital, some spent a week in the hospital, some uh, fell out on the floor, and luckily there was someone there to uh, get them a medical emergency treatment, but it is a serious thing. So, 
you know, I am getting older. Um, about to hit 53, I got a young daughter I need to think of, and she needs to take priority over any hobby that I have. Um, some people said, well, hey, just wear a hazmat suit in there. Well, this is a hobby, not a business. This is for fun. And um, for me personally, if I have to wear a hazmat suit every single time I work on the handle of a knife or just to clean up my shop when I'm done, because you would not believe the dust uh, that just making one knife would create. And it gets everywhere on everything, literally. Every tool, every everything gets covered in dust. Um, it just wouldn't become worth it. It just wouldn't be worth it at that point. It would no longer be fun, and that's why I'm doing this. Now, people say just use micarta or just use G10. Well, now you're talking about G10 fiberglass dust, and uh, I don't care what anybody, all you uh, weekend warrior armchair experts say. Um, I'm not messing with that. I'm trying to get fiberglass dust in my lungs, and I know I wear PPE, but I think I would have to upgrade it to something better and more expensive. As far as Marcata or Micarta, I always say that wrong. Um, from what I've read, I understand that if it's when you're grinding it, if it gets to a certain temperature, it can release um, formaldehyde fumes. You know, maybe bone would be an option, but then it just hit me. Um, even though I was doing well, and even though I was making some beautiful pieces after just two years, and I was well on my way, maybe I just wasn't meant to do this. So now I have the dilemma, I have a large shed, uh, it's fully insulated, got electricity, you know, it'd be a waste just to use it as a shed, so what am I gonna do? So I sold off 90% of my equipment, um, I've always enjoyed working out. I've turned this into a full gym. I kept a little spot in the back uh, to do work. And one of my friends, my friend Sam, who taught me so much about bladesmithing, has graciously said that I can use his shop anytime I want. So my thinking is, I'm going to go back in about six months or so, and I'm going to try and make one knife in his shop. He has some wood that's uh, been, um, I forget what you call it, but anyway, they, they take all the, it's stabilized. They take all the moisture, which includes the oil in the wood, which is what gives you the reaction. And they infuse it um, with some type of resin. That may or may not give me a reaction, but my thoughts are now, I'm just not gonna be a consistent and constant bladesmith, but being that I do have the skill and I love to do it, I think I'm going to go to his shop once or twice a year and just make a really nice piece. So instead of popping out, you know, 20 knives in a year, 30 knives in a year, um, one or two. And they're just gonna be real special, hopefully. So anyway, that's my news. It's a, it's a little depressing. No, I'm not depressed. It is a little depressing. It's, it's, it's a downer. Um, but um, I've utilized my space well. I have a gym. I can maybe get back in shape, get back into training, and um, still keep my hobby, but it'll just be once a year. Anyway, that's my news on that. That's why this is no longer a shop. That's why I'm no longer putting out any content on knives that I've made. I'll probably do reviews on knives and, uh, you know, from stores and, um, that's about it. Thanks for watching.